So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K25 Next Gen. And in today's video, we have the Houston Rockets. Although they did not end up making the playoffs last season in Houston was certainly a step in the right direction. This team ended up going 41 and 41. They were the 11 seed in the West and unfortunately missed a play in game by just a couple games. So this is a team that has obviously been rebuilding post James Harden. They've established themselves as one of the true, really solid young cores in all of basketball. Uh, and it really wouldn't surprise me at all if this team was a full blown playoff group this year. So we'll dive into the group. We'll talk about the team and how the roster is currently constructed. Coach all that fun stuff in just a second, but I am very much looking forward to a uh, maybe I don't want to say a potential Rockets dynasty here in 2k, but I've had a lot of success with Houston in the past. Let me know which team I should rebuild next down below in the comment section along with any other rebuild ideas. I do see people starting more and more frequently to ask, you know, maybe you do some rebuild challenges, kick off some of your other series that you do, and I am happy to do so, but of course I do want to try to complete my goal by getting all 30 teams done before the NBA season tips off on October 22nd. So um, I'm happy to venture out a couple different videos. If you guys want anything specific, you guys let me know down below. I'm excited for this one today, man. Let's get into it. Okay, now here at the start of the 2024-25 NBA season, let's go ahead and dive into this team a little bit. As I mentioned in the intro, I am of the belief that this is truly one of the better, more underrated young cores in all of basketball. So let's start out here at the point guard spot. Of course, a couple off seasons ago, brought in Fred Van Vliet. Many people considered it an overpay at the time. I don't really think many people actually looked and saw how many years the contract was, but basically $43 million annually is a lot of money for anybody, and especially for Fred Van Vliet. So uh, although he is a certainly a solid point guard option, I will be honest with you, I don't really see him as my point guard for three years in today's video. So uh, we're definitely going to give it at least one year with Freddie here at the helm. Obviously good to have, you know, NBA championship experience here, but uh, we probably know what's going to happen eventually. But he is a really decent option for us here, kicking things off. They did draft Reed Shepard third overall out of Kentucky, 20 years old, a 73 overall, a pretty good three-point shooter. And he is somebody that I am certainly going to look to develop today as much as possible so uh, whether I have him playing the one guard the two guard whatever it may be my goal is to get him you know basically as many minutes as possible right off the rip to see that overall jump up you got Aaron Holiday here you know 73 overall 28 years old Pretty much nothing more than a role player at this point. Not really sure what you know his role will be with this team. Of course, in real life, may end up being bigger because I don't really play three guards or three guys at any position. So we'll keep an eye on that. We move to the shooting guard spot. Jalen Green certainly had his ups and downs through his young career so far. Only 22 years old, of course, entering his fourth season in the league. After being the number two overall pick back in 2021, there are highs with Jalen Green. There are lows with Jalen Green. If he can be a little bit more consistent with those highs, I think he is somebody that's going to be very good for a long time. So. So uh, I know how he progresses here in 2K. There's you know, probably a very good chance he's my guy at the shooting guard spot today the entire video. You got a man Thompson, of course. One of the Thompson twins just finished up his rookie season. Pretty solid numbers all across the board. Of course, the shooting is never really going to be elite or maybe... You know, maybe it could be. I don't think it's ever going to be elite, but of course, you know, basically 14% from the on the arc. That is, you know, not his strong suit. And uh, it is strange to, you know, see a guy listed as a shooting guard shooting 14% from three. So, you know, I know that's not really what he's, he does. That's not what he thrives in. He's all around a pretty solid player. So I know his, how well his development goes. Guy pretty much always wins six man of the year. All right. Nate Hinton here, 25 years old, 67 overall. I, I'm not going to spend much time there. All right, Dylan Brooks, hard-nosed defensive player. Many people hate him. Many people love him. I kind of fall somewhere in the middle where I just don't really care. Uh, he is a nice role player on this team. He's not any sort of star or anything like that. He is very good at poking the bear, and when he gets poked back, it does not always go so well. So uh, we'll keep an eye here on, you know, with Dylan Brooks, see what we end up doing with him here today. He's definitely going to be my starter, though, here in year one. You got Cam Whitmore, incredible rookie season. Of course, fell back in 2023 for number 20. 20 overall, many people considered that a big surprise because there was high potential he was going to go in the top 10. That did not end up happening. Had an absolutely fantastic rookie campaign here in Houston, and I, I think the sky's kind of the limit here. Uh, AJ Griffin should not be here. They acquired him from the Atlanta Hawks this offseason, and they actually just agreed to a buyout because uh, he actually might be stepping away from basketball, which, you know, it's unfortunate for a guy who's only 21 years old. So, uh, you know, I hope everything's okay, but he, I'm going to, you know, release him at some point. We head to the power forward spot. Jamari Smith Jr. Entering year three. He was the third overall pick back in 2022. Of course, that was the draft class with Paolo Bencaro and Chet Holmgren, and he was kind of always the third guy. And, you know, I really need to see a bigger leap 
out of Jabari Smith Jr. heading into year three. It doesn't really necessarily mean it's make or break, but a lot of guys, I don't want to say, you know, their value is based on about three years into their career. You kind of tell what somebody's going to be. Of course, there are, you know, other cases where guys take off in like year seven and year eight. But for a guy that was taken third overall, I need to see a little bit more if we're going to commit to him long term as my starting power forward. You got Tari Eason here, really nice role player for this team, 23 years old, 79 overall. Somebody I'm definitely interested in paying past this season. You got Uncle Jeff, of course, got a ring with Denver just a few seasons ago. He is 38 years old, one year, $8 million. You know, at 38, probably not a long-term option. And then the center spot, Alperin Shengun. I absolutely love Shengun. I think he is going to be even better this next season. I fully uh, believe he has the talent and the capability to make an all-NBA team this season. Uh, I just, I very much believe in this kid. So 22 years old, 85 overall, definitely going to be my long-term center. Then you got Steven Adams here, was dealt last season while injured, has not actually played for the Houston Rockets yet. Uh, but he is a nice, solid veteran backup center here. And then Jock Londale as well, who they brought in on a three-year, $24 million deal just two off-seasons ago. So, or four-year, I guess, at that time. But you get the point. Um, so, yeah, we have pretty good depth with this group. Of course, there are a lot of young players here that I'm certainly looking forward to seeing how they progress. But we have a very solid core, uh, and I can definitely work with this. So, maybe a trade or two before we kick off year one. I think having a guy like Jeff Green, who has obviously been in the league for a while, a fantastic veteran presence, is a very important thing for a young team in real life. Unfortunately, here in 2K, it is not nearly as important. So, with Jeff Green being 38 years old, probably on, you know, I'd say whole 18 of his career at this point, we're going to move on. You know, we're going to trade him to the Cleveland Cavaliers for George's Niang, who is on a multi-year deal and is likely going to be nothing other than a trade asset at some point in this video. And that is actually going to be my only deal I make before we kick off year one. Uh, we have the depth and the 10-man rotation pretty much figured out. So, uh, we'll, you know, just I'll show you in a second. We did not really end up making any crazy moves with this team before we're kicking off year one. And of course, that is kind of the way I envisioned it. This is a team that has, you know, relatively good depth. And I think when you have good depth like Houston does, you have a lot of guys that are locked up on long-term deals. There's really no reason to force the issue, especially when, you know, like I do, believe this could be a playoff team. Here's how it's going to look. It's Fred Van Vliet, Jalen Green, Dylan Brooks, Jabari Smith Jr., Alperin Shingun. I don't know if there's any major surprises there for you, one through five. But in my opinion, uh, that is probably what the actual starting five will look like this year. Amen Thompson will be my sixth man off the bench. You got Tari Eason behind him, Cam Whitmore in here, Reed Shepard playing 14 minutes tonight, and then Steven Adams, the veteran backup center, uh, who, you know, is playing less minutes than he probably deserves, but it's just the way, you know, this team is right now. So, uh, unfortunately, a guy like Jock Londale, who is on a multi-year contract, not really seeing minutes here, and uh, it's unfortunate, but it is the reality we find ourselves in. So, I am excited, of course, led by Mr. Ime Udoka, led the Celtics to the finals back in 2022, of course, ended up uh, uh, let, being let go by the Celtics. Let's just leave it at that for, uh, you know, off-court issues. And then found a job here in Houston. Did a great job with this team here in year one. So uh, excited to have him at the helm here. I love Ime, and I am excited to see what he does with us here in 2K. So I'll see you guys at the end of year one here in Houston. I can't lie to you. I am a little disappointed with the way year one has concluded. It sees us finish with a record of 40 and 42. Of course, last season, now talking about real life, they actually went 41 and 41. So uh, a one game decrease, and that is not what we are in the business of doing. So we'll make some business decisions this offseason. Luka Doncic, first career MVP for him. Let's take a look. Zachary Zuche, does Tom know? Nope. Every other video, Men Thompson wins six man of the year. Maybe I didn't play him enough minutes, whatever it is. TJ McConnell gets it this time around. Victor Wimp and Yama Kid, Cunningham, Jalen Brunson, and Jason Kidd, your coach of the year. Okay, did we not even make the play in? Because that would be, oh my God. We missed the play in. We are the 11 seed once again, and we are going to be picking in the lottery, which, you know, maybe we'll get super lucky and jump up a bunch of picks. But my God, man, just. Disappointing, kind of all across the board, you know, all things considered. Shingun led us in points, and it was Jalen Green, Fred Van Vliet, Jabari Smith Jr. Again, was hoping for a bigger jump, and maybe this is just who Jabari Smith Jr. is, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but for a guy who was taking number three overall, I'd like to think there are maybe a little bit higher hopes uh, than these numbers right here. Not saying they're terrible or anything. Of course, the three-point percentage got significantly better, but uh, we will have to make, you know, again, a business decision at some point there. Dylan Brooks, Ken Whitmore, Thompson, Shepard, Eason, and then Adams. Rebounds for game led by Mr. Jabari Smith, and then Fred Van Vliet at seven and a half years forwards assists per game uh, led us okay let's sim through the playoffs of course we're not going to be participating unfortunately it is going to be a thunder and a pacers finals and the pacers i've been seeing them win it a lot here in year one you know maybe 2k pretty big fan of the pacers okay let's get into our first offseason you see lebron james calling it a career man that is a uh 
a day that I don't think many of us are prepared for. I think a lot of people, a lot of people who hate on LeBron are like, oh, I can't wait till that guy retires. But then you're going to realize that it's not, you know, oh, grass ain't always greener on the other side. Let me just tell you that. Because as much as you might want to hate on LeBron, you cannot sit here and tell me that he is not, you know, magically entertaining to watch. And I don't get the people that just hate on everybody because they kick the living shit out of your team for eight years or whatever, but I'm not one of those people. Um, we are, why am I doing that? Let's take a look at the draft lottery. We are currently projected to have the, where is it? Number 11 overall pick. The Nets don't have that pick. We have our own pick. I, I just checked fan spell. We have our pick. That Brooklyn pick, I don't think we're supposed to have, so let me fact check that. Uh, it does say we have the Brooklyn pick. Oh, do we have the right to swap? You know what? Let me re go ahead and check that. As of now, we have the number five overall pick, which is obviously great, but uh, I want to make sure that's 100% accurate before I do that. Well, hang on to Ime Udoka. I'm not saying he's on the hot seat yet, but another season like the one we just had, that chair is going to warm him up a little bit, buddy. Okay, number five overall. We also have 22 from the Detroit Pistons and then 26 in round two from the Thunder. Let me fact check this real quick. I'm going to read you something from Fanspo. I am going to try to make this as quick as possible. And for the poor SOBs that are sitting in an actual NBA front office and have to figure this shit out, my heart goes out to you because this, this is confusing. All right, let me read you this. OKC has the right to swap its 2025 first round pick for Houston's first round pick protected for selections 1 through 10 or the Clippers first round pick. Our pick is not 1 through 10, so they could swap if they wanted to, hypothetically. Houston then has the right to swap its pick or the OKC pick to Brooklyn for Phoenix's 2025 first-round pick. This is... It, what if, if the Houston pick... What? I have absolutely no idea. I don't know if we're supposed to have this pick or not, but what I'm going to do and just... Play it safe. Maybe I'll be wrong. I'm just going to give Houston or Brooklyn their pick back. I'm going to take my pick back and everybody's going to sing in a song and all this shit. This is the most confusing thing I've ever read. The problem is that, that all of these draft picks have been traded about 28 different times. And now there's 85,000 protections on the different things. And dumbasses like me can't figure this shit out. So what I'm going to do is just send the pick back to Brooklyn. If the Nets are actually supposed to have you know a swap here with our pick then I, you know, am a sucker, right? It only hurts me. I, what I don't want to do is help myself more than I'm actually supposed to. So I'm going to assume that, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but it is what it is, and I'll just live with the consequences of me not being able to figure out, you know, the declaration of independence that is written right there in hopes of me actually figuring out what draft pick I'm supposed to have. So, long story short, we have 11, 22, and 26. Uh, I am definitely not going to use all of these, and I am going to weigh my options now. So once again, I will be back. I think without a doubt, Franz Wagner would be a very nice upgrade to this team. I'm looking for a little bit more consistency in the scoring department from my small forward. I understand maybe that's not Dylan Brooks's, you know, strong suit, if you will. And at the end of the day, it was probably always going to be a position I was going to look to upgrade. So I'm striking basically at the first opportunity I have. What I've noticed so far throughout 2K25 is sometimes I think I'm maybe waiting a little bit too long to make deals. And the panic meter kind of sets in. Long story short, I want to make this deal. So Dylan Brooks, Jock Lawndale, the two first round picks we have right here. Let's just shake hands and wow, that was actually a little easier than I thought. Okay, welcome to the team, Franz Wagner. Uh, I am excited to have you here. I do not need the 26 overall pick in round two, so thank you very much, Philadelphia. And we will not be drafting anybody this year. Look, this is already a team with immense young depth and young talent. I am just going to go ahead and bank with the guys we already have and make an upgrade of the small forward spot. Uh, unlike what you know the CPU typically does with the Rockets, they just let Alperen Shengun walk out the door. I am not that stupid, so I'm going to pay him. I'm going to pay Jalen Green, and we are going to bring back both of our stars that are you know 23 or younger so let's just do that let's pay mr jalen green 36 million is a lot shingun has 10 offers none of which appear to be anything serious so he wants about 35 million annually it's fine by me we bring them both back everybody is happy so uh, i understand it is a you know an absolute bag for both those guys and you know i understand that maybe they haven't earned 200 plus million dollars yet with the way they've played but uh, unfortunately that's the way the nba is today we are just banking on potential what teams kind of have to do. So uh, I think we may have one more upgrade, I think. Steven Adams is a free agent. We just traded Jock Lawndale. We are now in the market for a new backup center, and we are going to find that in a deal here with the Memphis Grizzlies, acquiring 28-year-old, 78 overall, Mr. Brandon Clark. So uh, really didn't give up a lot to land him. Ultimately, both those guys were uh, always going to be trade pieces for me. So uh, we are all set if we want to be right now. Uh, again, we have... 
maybe a decision to make on Jabari Smith Jr. at some point in time. He is going to be uh, a restricted free agent after this next season, so I'm almost terrified for how much money he's going to ask for, but uh, I'm going to give him one more year. Of course, we added some more talent to this team. Uh, maybe if he continues to put up the numbers he did with that extra talent, we'll be good to keep him and hang on to him. So uh, I need a much better season than what we just had, though. So I'll see you guys at the start of year two. It is year two. Here in Houston, year one ended up being a very, very big disappointment. And if that is the case here in year two, the panic meter is going to reach an all-time high. Now, this offseason, we made some changes. Of course, the big addition of Franz Wagner taking over at our small forward spot. Something I am noticing that I did not do, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you it was intentional, is trade Fred Van Vliet. Now, I definitely considered a couple different offers at the start of this season. I did not end up making a, a deal, though. So, Fred Van Vliet, of course, on the last year of his deal now he is still going to be my point guard and maybe if things go well he'll be it for the remainder of the video so you never know the way these things are going to go it is Fred Van Vliet Jalen Green Franz Wagner Jabari Smith Jr. and Alperin Shengun there is no doubt that the talent is here and if this team is not in the playoffs I'm going to be very mad. Men Thompson going to be my sixth man off the bench once again. You got Tara Easton still here, Cam Whitmore, Reed Shepard, and then Brandon Clark so you know it is it is basically now or never for lack of actually I want to switch this I want to do that. Yes, that is what I wanted to do. It is now or never. There is no doubt about it. I will see you guys at the end of the second season. Luka Doncic wins another MVP, but more importantly, we had a good year too. We go 58 and 24. Very big jump from obviously under 500 at 40 and 42 just a year ago, and I am happy because we are a playoff team. Luka, as I mentioned, another MVP. Cooper Flagg ends up being drafted by the Toronto Raptors at number one overall. He is your rookie of the year. Anthony Simons, wow, 21 points a game as a sixth man. He does win the award. Wemby wins another deep boy bones. Highland most improved. Giannis clutch player of the year in 64 wins, man. I'm telling you, this game loves the Dallas Mavericks. Okay, where did we end up here in the landscape of a loaded West? It is the two seed. Unbelievable. We're going to be facing a playing team. I love it. I love it. Okay, it was the second best record in the league. Let's go over some numbers real quick. Shingun, steady 20 points a game. He's our leading scorer. Jalen Green, Franz Wagner, as I mentioned, looking for a little bit of a jump from our small forward spot. And uh, he takes that jump, and I will definitely live with it. Uh, we mentioned that Jabari Smith Jr., you know, was probably never going to be anything crazy in the points per game department. But, uh, you know, if his role wanted to stay steady, we obviously needed improvements elsewhere, and we made those improvements. Fred Van Vliet, Cam Whitmore, Men Thompson, Tari Eason, Reed Shepard, and then Brandon Clark. Rebounds per game, led by Jabari and assist was Freddie. Okay, round one. We are facing a plan team. That plan team is the Portland Trailblazers. Scoot Henderson, Shaden Sharp, Denny Avdia, Jabari Walker, Hartenstein now here. Okay, interesting. Pretty good team they got there in Portland. You know, they're not elite or anything like that, but they're building something. I will, uh, I'll give them credit for that. We are currently up 3-1, and we do end up winning the series in five. Now we move on to a pain in my ass, and I know they're a pain in my ass because I run into them every single time I do a Western Conference rebuild. Them, of course, being the Minnesota Timberwolves. Here it goes. Nothing against Ant-Man and the rest of his squad. Quick 2-0 lead for us. 3-0 lead for us. Oh, baby. We are back in the West Finals. And here comes a, uh, not my favorite. Oh, wow, Draymond Green and Moses Moody. Now here, was there a big trade? Was it P.J. Washington involved? I didn't know if maybe the Warriors traded for Clay back, but no, two uh, you know Warriors here with Clay Thompson and Draymond. And, you know, I completely forgot about Moses Moody. Three Warriors here, actually. All right, West Finals. Here goes nothing. We steal game one on the road. They do win game two. We go up 2-1. They tie it at twos. We go down 3-2. We get fucking bounced in six. God damn, what? I mean... <sighs> <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, De'Aaron, wow, the Raptors just had the number one overall pick, and now they are in the NBA Finals. Crazy how fast things can go. But nope, Luka in Dallas getting it done. God, this game just loves Dallas, man. Uh, CP3, Al Horford, Kevin Durant, Nikola Vucevic, Clay Thompson, Tristan Thompson, man. A lot of legendary names there. Hall of Fame inductees. Jersey retirements, draft lottery time. Let's sim through this. Okay. I know it says we have the Wizards in the Brooklyn Nets pick. I... There's nothing on Fanspo about that. So unless those picks were dealt this offseason, I will double check again. Because I, as much as I'd love to have the number four and number seven overall pick, there is absolutely nothing about it. Let me just, I have it literally pulled up. I don't know if this game is broken, if my eyeballs are broken, but I am on the page for the Brooklyn Nets future draft picks. It says in 2026, they own their own pick. It says there's no protections, there's no swaps. It says they own their draft pick. Now, if I go ahead and I check this for the Washington Wizards, I am pretty sure it is going to say the same exact thing. 2026 draft, it says, uh, this is Phoenix. No, 2026, own. It, 
I'm not supposed to have these picks is what I'm really trying to say. And I, and I want to use them. And I, I would like to think that 2K is not stupid enough to fuck up draft picks. So, you know, two years into a rebuild, but they are. Uh, I'm hanging on to email, by the way. We are going to head up to the draft. Again, if I am wrong, I am only shooting myself in the foot, but I'm not going to use draft picks that I'm not supposed to. So let's head over to the Brooklyn Nets. Again, it's... It sucks as much as I'd love to have my own draft pick. I just don't really think I'm supposed to. So we'll do this. I will do this. Again, I don't know why this game gets things wrong. Um, and it wasn't like there was even a protection on any of these things. It's just, it's unbelievable how dumb this game can be sometimes. And maybe I'm wrong. I, I very well could be wrong. I've been wrong before and I'll probably be wrong again in the future. But yeah, it sucks. It is what it is. All right. So now we have no draft picks, which uh, of course sucks, but it is what it is. We will skip over the 2027 swap. That That is accurate. That is accurate. The other things, they were not. Team player options, uh, Thompson, Whitmore, and Reed Shepard all going to be brought back. Jabari Smith Jr. and Tari Eason will both be qualified. And as we enter free agency, I know Fred Van Vliet also sitting here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay Fred. And honestly, some of you may like this. Some of you may hate it. I think Fred is then going to be traded. What? Jabari Smith Jr. wants $36 million? Oh, fuck off, Jabari. You have not. 13 points a game. You're asking for $36 million? Oh, man. Um, Tari Eason, he's not accepting any of those. Okay. I just wanted to make sure we were able to get everybody else back before we you know, go out and pay Tari Eason. So I will pay him, and he's good. All right, we're making some trades. Oh, my God. Holy shit, we just traded for LaMelo Ball. Wow, I did not think that was going to go through. Fred Van Vliet, Brandon Clark, three, what is that, three, four first round draft picks. And just like that, LaMelo Ball is officially a Houston Rocket. So, you know, we knew at some point we we're going to have to make an upgrade at that point guard spot. Ultimately, Fred Van Vliet filled his role very well for us throughout this video. But uh, LaMelo is a significant improvement in pretty much all areas of this. So, yeah, I think I'm going to, you know, let it ride it out with $210 million player, Jabari Smith Jr. at my power forward spot. I do need to find myself a new backup center. My options are uh, less than ideal. Maybe we'll bring back Jock Long. You want to run it back, big man? Why the hell not? I will see you guys at the start of the third and final season. The pure talent and depth we have on this team is absolutely insane. Of course, this offseason swinging a blockbuster deal with the Charlotte Hornets, landing ourselves LaMelo Ball, and this team has come together quite nicely, of course, between the trades, the development, and I'm uh, I'm happy. It is championship or bust, though, so here goes nothing. LaMelo Ball, Jalen Green, Franz Wagner, Jabari Smith Jr., Alperin, Shangun, Ben Shino will be led by Amen Thompson. I feel bad I couldn't find a way to get him into the starting five, but... I uh, mean, maybe could have ran him at the one guard, but, you know, I got LaMelo. Uh, Cam Whitmore behind him, Reed Shepard in here, Tari Eason, and then Jock Londale. You know, it sucks because there's a lot of good players here that are not playing nearly as many minutes as they probably deserve. I'm actually going to do something. I'm going to swap that out a little bit. It's rare that I play anybody less than 10 minutes a night, but special circumstances. It is championship or bust. I will see you guys at the end of year three. Luka wins a third straight MVP, but who gives a shit? We go 72-10, and 10, of course, tying the second best record in NBA history, and I would very much like to do what the 72-10 and 10 Chicago Bulls did. Cameron Boozer's your rookie of the year. Anthony Simons, once again, was that exactly identical points per game? Oh my god, 0.1 off. Uh, Wemby, another deep boy. Kadeen Malik, Steph Curry, Ime Udoka. Okay, it is championship, it is championship, it is championship. That has got to be our mentality right now. Dallas still taking the two seed, but they are uh, maybe not once or as good as maybe they once were. So here goes nothing. Points per game, it was Lamelo Ball, Alperin, Shengun, Marine, Wagner. Let's just do it, man. I, I respect consistency. Jabbar Smith Jr. is nothing if not consistent. I mean, look at those numbers basically throughout his entire career. Rebounds Jabbar Smith Jr. and assists Lamelo. Okay, round one. It is us. Are you serious? First of all, I respect Jimmy ring chasing at this point in his career, but why is this a play-in team, right? I know the West is loaded, but there's just, there's no effing way that is a play-in team. And if I get screwed here in round one, I'm going to be so pissed. Okay, thank you. Now we move on. As I don't want to, you know, discredit the Portland Trailblazers, but I am significantly less terrified of them than I am the Oklahoma City Thunder, who I don't know if I'd call it a super team, but they were really, really effing good. So here goes nothing in the West semis. Quickly up 3-0. We do sweep. Now it is the West Finals. We do avoid Luka, but we find ourselves with another demon here in Victor Wembanyama. So here goes the Western Conference Finals. We lose game one at home, tie it up, go up 2-1, go up 3-1, and we win four straight. Gentlemen sweep the Spurs. And it is LaMelo Ball, Western Conference Finals MVP. We will be taking on Mr. Giddy <laughs> and at the Chicago Bulls. Okay, uh, really? 
Again, not trying to be disrespectful, but how do we find ourselves uh, in situations like this? I mean, I'll take it. Don't get me wrong. I will 1,000%. You know, just thanks for coming. Alperen Shingu in your finals MVP. All right, I apologize for no gameplay. This video has already been very long. And uh, yeah, I mean, this team was very good. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you we didn't have a cakewalk. Uh, I, don't, I don't Cakewalk's not the right word. Maybe just like an easy matchup in the NBA Finals. We did. There's no doubt about that. But, of course, we had to face uh, a lot of really good teams to get there. So, you know, we put together a really fun squad. Of course, wanted to keep the majority of this core intact and kind of added a couple of really nice pieces around it. So, this one was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know any other rebuild ideas down below in the comment section. As I mentioned in the intro, I'm happy to, you know, build out, start other series, do challenges, all that fun stuff you guys all love. But uh, I do really, do really want to get through all 30 teams before the NBA actually tips off. And we are slowly approaching October, so there's only so much time we have left. But that is it for me. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.